Hey, what's up guys? It's Chuck from MotionApprentice.com. I wanted to record another tutorial to show you the process of creating and rigging a character within After Effects using rubber hose. Now I'm going to do a really simple character so it doesn't get overly complex and um, you know, hopefully you can take a lot of the concepts that I use in this tutorial to, to you know, expand on it and make much more complex figures and and uh, uh, much more complex rigs. But I'm going to try and keep this simple. Um, I I didn't really do much of a run through before I started this, so uh, there's probably going to be mistakes. But I think those are usually pretty valuable uh, to see when you're watching a tutorial, so you know the kinds of roadblocks that you might run into. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into After Effects and get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and import uh, this little character that uh, I, I drew this guy on my iPad a couple months ago. Whoops. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a simplified version of this guy for this tutorial. So uh, let's start out by creating his torso and we're going to use a shape layer. So I create a shape layer in my, um, in, in my uh, turbo layers script there and I'm going to color pick that orange color and uh, give it no stroke and I'm gonna go ahead and draw out the shape for this guy's body okay so that's close enough for his body. Um, I, I'm going to uh, go a little bit beyond this drawing because I want to show you some of the options you have for styling rubber hoses. Um, so I'm going to give him a pair of shorts. So the way I'm going to do that is very similar to uh, how I did um, the, the mouth rig tutorial that you may have seen in After Effects. I'm going to use uh, paths with, with copied property links to mask out the layer for his shorts. Now there's definitely other ways to do this. You can use the merge paths command within shape layers. This is just how I do it because it's nice and quick uh, for me to do it. But there are a million ways to work with shape layers. So definitely if you don't use them much, uh, look into them more. All right, so we're gonna rename this layer torso and I'm going to put this into its own pre-comp because I want the torso to have its own composition. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move this more or less to the center of the composition. And then I'm going to take um, this region of interest tool, which is uh, pretty cool. It allows you to uh, just focus the rendering on a, on a particular region. And I'm gonna to go to composition and then crop comp to region of interest. And that just makes the comp size the size of that region of interest. So. Um, when, when we go out to the main comp, it's just that size. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create another shape layer, and we're going to call this shorts, and we're going to draw out a new path, and we're going to overlap that body there, and we're going to color this one like a, a light gray color, okay? So we're going to take this torso layer underneath, and we're going to go to edit, copy with with property links which is control alt c and we're going to paste it into that new composition and move it above the shorts layer and then we're going to change that shorts uh, layer to have a track mat using the alpha mat of torso 2 so now those shorts just sit right within that torso layer there um, okay so i don't know why this is called torso comp one i'm just going to call it torso all right, so now we have the torso comp there. Go up to full resolution. I, I'm not crazy about kind of the sharp crease on a couple of these points over here. So this is the beauty of using that, that method is that the torso that I'm using as the mask will automatically adjust to, um, to follow the, the torso uh, layer underneath. They're linked together. So torso two up here is just an instance or a copy of torso underneath, essentially. So as I adjust these points here, that mask will also adjust accordingly and, and mask the, the shorts layer appropriately. So just 
I'm gonna round out that corner a little bit. So it's so picky, but it's, it just bothered me. All right, so uh, there's the torso. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create uh, a face rig. So um, what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and just create another composition because I'm gonna put the entire face into its own comp. And we'll make this, I don't know, 800 by 800 sounds fine. And we can drag the character image in here if we want, uh, just to reference it. So I'm gonna start with the eyes and we'll create a shape layer here and we're gonna draw out a circle because the eyes are just simple circles. Okay. And we'll make that circle white. And we'll call this eyeball underscore L for left. And we're going to create another shape layer. And inside of that one, we're gonna do a little pupil here change that color to black and I'm gonna draw another circle mask on top of it just to make a little a little highlight there just to make it a little more interesting okay so we'll rename this layer pupil left okay and I'm gonna use my anchor point tool over here this comes in the motion script that I talked about in one of my recent videos and I'm gonna move the anchor point to that pupil right in the middle of the circle. So <clears throat> now when we wanna animate it, you know, it won't be, the anchor point won't be off somewhere. And you'll see me adjusting the anchor points on these layers that I'm drawing a lot, just trying to keep them nice and organized for animation. Okay, so we'll create another shape layer. And this one is going to be the top eyelid. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag out a simple rectangle. You know what, I'm gonna make it pretty deep so we have lots of room to work with when we animate, okay? So um, I have uh, the color of, the basic color of the character just darkened up a little bit, uh, picked over here in my, um, my little text window just so I can uh, quickly grab that. So I have his top eyelid here adjust that anchor point and we're going to rename this layer top actually we're going to rename it eyelid left top and we'll duplicate it it'll be eyelid left bottom and we're going to drag that one down to the bottom and now we're going to use the same exact technique that we just used on the torso and shorts we're going to we're going to uh, control alt c on the eyeball layer and then we're gonna paste that and use that as a mask on those eyelid layers. So we'll take the eyelid layers and we'll go to alpha mat. And now the eyelids are masked off by those uh, linked eyeball layers. And if we want to, we can rename these. We can say eyeball mask, rename this one eyeball mask. And then again, uh, just like with the torso, the beauty of this is that if I get in here and I decide I wanna mess around with um, you know, the shape of the eye to, as I'm animating, do some different stuff, uh, those masks will follow it. So the eyelids will always be within the boundaries of that eyeball, okay? So um, I think I can just, if I grab all this, can I just duplicate it? Let's see, let's see if that works. So I'm gonna color all the duplicates that I just made green so we know where they're, where they're separated. And I'm gonna drag them over, okay? So it looks to me like we probably have to make new copied links of the eyeball over here, okay? So this is gonna be eyeball, Let's rename it eyeball right. And this is gonna be pupil right. And this will be eyelid right top. And this will be eyelid right bottom. 
Okay. And you're not seeing the bottom or, or you're not seeing the top eyelid right now because it inherited the uh, the the track mat uh, designation when I copied it over. So right now, because I deleted those other eyeballs, it's being masked by the bottom eyelid. So it's still there. It's just you're not seeing it because it's got the alpha track mat on it. So uh, same thing here. I'm going to control alt C to copy the right eyeball with property links and I'm going to paste it twice and we're going to move these these mask layers up above the eyelids and we want to hide those so you don't see them. Okay and we can um, go ahead and rename these as well. It's always good to stay organized. Okay, and on these ones down here, I just realized I didn't have the left designation. Probably doesn't make much of a difference because we're going to be locking these and hiding them anyway. But again, always good to uh, stay as organized as possible, especially with character stuff because it gets really complicated really quick. Okay. All right, so we have his eyeballs done there. Um, his nose, super simple, just uh, just a, a ball with a little highlight on it, just a red ball with a little highlight. So we'll drag that out. We'll change the color. What am I doing here? We'll change the color to red. And we'll drag a little white highlight on top of that. Change the color of that highlight to white. And we can change the name of this to nose. So the nose is that simple. I'm going to get into a habit uh, right now of using um, some color coding to kind of designate between what's left and what's right. So for right, we already have these all colored green. So anything that's on the left hand side of the body, let's go ahead and just color all those layers red. And then anything that's in the middle, like the nose or the mouth, we'll just leave blue. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the mouth real quick. Again, same concept. If you want to see this a little slower, uh, you can look at my video tutorial on creating this simple rig. I want to use Roto Bezier for this. So. Drag out a mouth shape and we're going to hold alt and we're going to crease the corners of that shape there. Drag this one out a little bit. So there's our basic mouth shape and we can name this mouth base and I'm going to color this like a like a dark red color. Okay, because that'll be the inside of the mouth. All right, now we're going to create another shape layer right above that. And this is going to be for the teeth. So for now, I'm just going to do a real simple rectangle. And we'll color that in, whoops, we'll color that in white because that'll be his teeth. And then I want to give them a little bit of a curve. So I'm going to take the rectangle path in this shape layer. And I'm going to convert it to a bezier path. That just gives me the ability to drag out a little bit of a curve here. Okay, so those are his teeth on top. And then uh, let's rename this to teeth. I'm not going to do any bottom teeth because, you know, this is just getting through this real quick, but I am going to do a tongue. So uh, I'm going to go with normal Bezier curve here. Okay, and I'm going to recolor this something that's more tongue-like. Okay, and again, the same, the same old thing. We're going to use the Control-Alt-C to copy with property links, and we're going to paste it, and we're going to use that as a mask above the tongue and the teeth layer. So we go to Alpha Matte. And there's the mask. So the tongue I forgot to rename. We're going to rename that real quick. And 
we're gonna call this mouth mask and we're gonna call this one mouth mask as well and then I want this mouth doesn't doesn't matter um, really it, this isn't uh, necessary but I would like this mouth to have some lips so whoops I need to remember to copy with property links so the lips follow the contour of the mouth uh, base shape as I animate it. So I'm going to control alt C the mouth base, control V above the teeth and the tongue, and we're going to call this lips. And I'm going to drag out, uh, I guess I need to go in here and I need to give it its own stroke. So. Um, here's what's happening. It's not allowing me to, to drag out a stroke because it's still following the stroke from the original base layer. So that's really driven by an expression here. So if you want to get rid of that link, that one link, what you can do is you can alt click on the stopwatch and that allows it, that unlinks it from the mouth base shape, uh, shape layer. So now I can drag out my own uh, that, that layer's own uh, stroke. I need to do it on the color as well. And uh, we can have our, our set of lips on top and then we just need to hide the fill to show all of the layers underneath, okay? So now we have our basic face rig. Um, it needs a lot of cleanup. So uh, let's go ahead and just do that real quick. Um, we don't need to deal with anything that's doing um, masking right so uh, all that stuff because it's just following the base layers of the mouth or of the eyeball or whatever uh, we don't need to mess with those layers at all so let's select all those and we're going to go ahead and lock those masking layers and that's why it's nice to have them properly named as you're going because it's easy to select okay this is a mask the next one's a mask whatever okay so um Actually, before I lock them, what I want to do is I want to hit the Shy Guy button here so that I can hide them after I lock them. So now let's lock them. We'll hit the Shy Guy. So those are out of the way. We don't need to mess with those. Now, um, we can leave the eyeballs in case, the eyeball base, in case we want to mess with it. We can leave the pupils and the eyelids on the top and bottom we can leave. The nose, you never know, we might want to mess with that. Um, and the mouth base, we want to leave so that we can manipulate the shape and animate it. Uh, the tongue, we want to leave. And the teeth, we want to leave. The lips, we do not need. So the lips, we can hit, um, let's unshy everything. The lips, we can hit shy and we can lock that and let's reshy everything. Okay. So um, now you can get into. If you want to, uh, rigging everything up nicely for animation with null layers. So I'll just show you some quick examples of that. Um, let's say we want to be able to grab one null to move the pupils from side to side. So we can create a null here. <coughs> Excuse me. And we can move it to wherever, you know, we think makes sense. So we'll just go right between the eyes here. And we can rename this. pupil null and we can grab these two pupils I need my uh, parenting column here so I can pick whip it so put the parenting column in then we'll pick whip to the pupil null so now we can adjust this one null to move those eyes from side to side but we can also individually grab those and we can scale them up and down if we want now you could also you could set up that scaling with all kinds of different expression of all kinds of different expressions and stuff like that. But let's just keep this simple. So um, that's all pretty good. I think what I'm going to do is, I mean these these eyelids are easy enough to grab within this composition and adjust them individually. So I guess I'm going to leave those and. Same thing with the teeth and the tongue. You know, sometimes it's nice to set up um, nulls to to drive that stuff, but I don't think it's necessary in this case with such a simple character. So 
Um, let's go ahead and I want to grab that tongue though and we'll just recenter the anchor point. Just keep everything nice and tidy. Same thing with the teeth. Okay. And then let's see, the nose will center it. The eyes are already centered, the pupils are centered. All right, so I think that's, um, that's pretty good as far as the face goes. It's nice to have this null to be able to make them look side to side real easily without having to individually animate each of those pupils. That would be kind of a pain. So uh, let's call this face good. And um, yeah, all right. So uh, his face is good, his torso is done. Let's drag his face into the torso comp and we'll move it up onto his body and make it look like it makes some sort of sense. Uh, and let's go ahead and create another couple of shape layers because I wanna do the horns for sure and then maybe we'll do the ears as well again I'm, I'm trying to keep this somewhat simple um, you know it, it doesn't need to be really detailed to show you how to rig but um, I want to be somewhat truthful to the uh, art as well so we'll create his left horn here drawing out with the pen tool, um, nothing fancy. Okay, so let's name this horn left. Okay, let me look at the art here. I guess we could do, whoops, I guess we could do his ear on top of it um, on the same layer or a different layer. Uh, I'm just going to do it on the same layer for now. So, I'm going to drag out a shape for his ear. Okay. Okay, that's close enough, and I'm going to do the inside of the ear as well. So we're going to make that kind of a, a pink, pinkish layer. And I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time trying to make this, you know, real pretty. Um, I just want to get through it quick. So maybe I'm spending too much time on the ears here, but. Um, Okay, I think that's good enough. All right, so we got his one horn here. Let's duplicate it and we'll call this horn underscore right. And I'm gonna go in and take that first shape layer and just stretch it out to the opposite side. We don't need the inside of the ear on this one, just need the outside. So I'm going to do that. Then horn right can go underneath the torso. Okay. And um, what I want to do for horn right is I want to take that ear and I want to make it a little bit darker so you can distinguish it from the outline of the head there. All right. So uh, there's the basic, basic body for this guy. All right. So now um, let's get into the rubber hose portion, which is really the whole point of this. Um, it's all super easy once you see how it works. So I have the rubber hose script uh, docked here to the left. And the way it works is you go to the build tab and you have, uh, these are just different naming conventions for the different hoses that you build. So you have um, shoulder, wrist, hip, ankle, shoulder, hips, these all work the same way. It's just how they're named when you add them into the composition. So let's go ahead and do his legs first. So for hip, ankle, we wanna select that, and then we can just build the, the rig in one click by hitting new rubber hose here, okay? So that creates a couple of control layers 
and the hose layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and just move all this stuff up to the top of the comp just to keep it uh, separate. And I'm gonna head into, real quick, the face comp to see what our color convention is. So left-hand stuff is red. So I'm gonna select all these layers, I'm gonna make them red before I forget, and then I'm gonna rename this hose layer leg underscore left. All right, so the way that this works is it builds this rig that gives you these control layers and you can move these control layers around to get kind of a pseudo IK type rig, okay? So let's start by moving these controllers to where they make sense. So that one that I just moved up here was the hip and this bottom one is the leg. So right, right off the bat, you see we have a little bit of a problem in that the leg is really bending out here. It's kind of long. Well, that's easy to adjust with the hose length parameter right here. So let's go down to um, 325 and see how that works. I, I actually think that's a pretty good length. So uh, 325 is a good length there. Uh, it might change in a second though, because you see how we're getting this kind of noodle bend here. Um, you know, it's it's not a sharp bend. Well, you can adjust that as well with the bend radius. So I normally start out by taking it down to something like 15 if I want a nice sharp bend. And I think that works perfectly for this. So we'll go with 15 on the bend radius there. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have his basic leg built here. Now, obviously in the illustration, his legs are a different color. So we can change that by going to the leg shape layer, which I renamed leg left here. And we can drill it down. And you'll see that we have this group called style. And then we have the base hose underneath that. So all we have to do is take the uh, the base hose here and we can just simply click on the on the leg layer if we want but we want to change the color of this stroke to match the color of his horns or his skin or his leggings or whatever the heck <laughs> this guy is doing with his legs so uh, there we go we got uh, the correct color now obviously we have another little problem which is that we want kind of a, a pants leg to come over um, come down to the knee because he's supposed to be wearing shorts right so uh, what I can do is we can, there, there's a couple ways to do this, but what I usually do is I take the base hose and I duplicate it. And I, I'm wondering if I can rename it. So let's call it pants leg. I don't know if it will upset any of the expressions, but let's see. So pants leg, and we're gonna come down and the stroke in here, we're gonna change to the color of the pants. So great. Now, um, one issue that we have is that it's covering his whole leg and we don't want that. So with pants leg selected, we can add a trim paths operator. And what that does is that allows you to um, trim the path so it doesn't go the entire length. So if we trim the end here, it shrinks from the top. If we, let me zoom in so you can see a little better. If we trim the start, it'll trim it from the bottom. So we can go up to about his knee and there we have the start of his pants leg. Now we can also go into stroke and we can adjust the, the width. So it gives him, you know, some shorts there that are a little bit baggy, right? Now, uh, obviously we don't want this round cap. So um, we can change the cap right underneath the stroke width to a butt cap. And that gives us a nice squared off pants leg. Now it's hard to see, but that does introduce one more problem, which is that um, the, the stroke for the pants is a butt cap now, so it's revealing the, the leg stroke up there. There's a couple ways to handle that. Um, one way is you could just go into the base hose and you could add a trim path to that and you could trim it, uh, trim it down so it's behind the pants. Another way to handle it is you could uh, duplicate the pants leg and let's call this pants joint and we want to add back the round cap so it covers up this area of the hip here okay obviously it gives us the round cap at the bottom as well but since we already have the trim paths here that's really easy to fix by just adjusting the trim path and hiding it behind that pants leg so there's a couple ways to, to deal with that, but hopefully uh, you get the idea from what I just did. So we have the, um, the hip there, all right?
I mean the the leg rig there. So I want to grab that hip and show you why rubber hose is kind of cool. Um, we can go in and we can grab our parent column because I want to start pick whipping here. And the the hip controller, we can parent it to the torso. And while we're at it, why don't we take the face and the horn, uh, both horns, and we'll parent those to the torso as well. So now I have the torso and I have the horns, the face, and the hip controller all parented to it. Now if I grab the torso and animate it, look at that, we get a nice kind of pseudo IK uh, automatic leg bend there, which, uh, sorry about that, which is, uh, which is kind of cool, it gives us a nice little IK rig. So that's why uh, rubber hose is so cool. So let's go ahead and finish um, rigging up this character. Now we have one leg built, obviously we need another one, and that's super easy with rubber hose. We can just grab um, any one of the controllers or the base hose in the left leg rig, and we can go to manage, and there's a button here that has a little times two on it, and we just click that, and it duplicates the rig. So right away, let's just drag this to the top to separate it, and we're gonna color it green so we know that this is the right leg, right? So we'll rename this layer leg underscore right. And this layer is actually gonna go beneath the torso. So let's drag it back down beneath the torso. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just adjust the positioning of those control layers. Okay, so you can you can order these however you want. So the hip, if we want the hip above the torso, uh, just the control layer above the torso so we can see it, we can move it up and you can see that we can see that there. Um, but I'm not gonna mess with that too much, so I'm gonna just drag it back down to where it was, okay? So again, everything is already automatically parented and we have that nice uh, pseudo IK rig, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So. Um, that's how the leg rigs work and we can get into adding. Let's add some simple uh, feet now. I'm gonna just blow through uh, a quick foot illustration. Uh, it's not gonna be pretty. It's not gonna be uh, as nice looking as the sample image here if you can even call that nice. But um, I just wanna go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm gonna create another pre-comp. You can do this in the main comp if you want, but uh, for reasons I'll show you later, it's kind of nice to have this stuff in pre-comps. So we're gonna call this foot, and the height we can probably knock down a little bit. We'll do 600 by 800. And um, let's just create a real quick shoe shape. <laughs> okay, and I, I like to just kind of geometrically drag these points out and then you know uh, when I'm using Bezier and then I'll adjust kind of the curve of it later so there this is going to be the back of the foot and this is going to be where the ankle meets the foot and this is we're just going to say that's like the tongue of the shoe and over here is the toe. Okay. Probably spending more time on this than I need to, but just want to have something halfway decent looking. Okay. And then um, what we can do is we can color this in like a gray color or something. Okay, and obviously you can go in and you can add as much detail on this as you want. Um, and you can use those same techniques with copying property links and masking off. Like if you wanna draw some quick shoelaces in there, you can. Um, but for now, I think this should work just fine. And maybe I'll, I'll make it a little more detailed when I share the project file with you. But, uh, okay, so we have the foot and let's drag that pre-comp in here. Made it a little bit bigger than we needed, but that's all right. So uh, let's move the anchor point on this foot comp to where it would make sense that this shoe kind of rotates from. 
So we'll, something like that is fine. And we'll go ahead and we'll set up the, um, the right leg first, okay? So this is super easy. All you have to do is, uh, I'm gonna drag it underneath the ankle there so we can see the controller. All you have to do is really just parent it to that ankle controller, okay? And what happens is when you do that, it will follow that ankle controller. And you can see that right now it's rotating with the ankle controller, which is, is fine in some circumstances if that's what you want. But there's also a setting in here that I like to uh, uncheck called auto rotate end. And when you do that, the foot will go kind of all uh, kind of go wonky but you just need to rotate it back into place okay and what that does is that separates the the rotation of the foot from the controller so now the foot stays stable and you can rotate it independently which which works uh, nicely for animating walk cycles and stuff like that okay so um, that's that for parenting feet. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna parent uh, the other one now as well. And it got kinda all out of whack there. I'm going to grab, oops, grab that controller, take off auto rotate, and rotate this guy into place as well. Okay. So now same thing on that side, the foot stays stable and we can rotate it on our own, okay? So that's the legs finished and you can see we get that nice little uh, IK-like rig there. So let's go ahead and do the arms and I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks um, with the hands real quick as well if I have time here. So um, we're going to go ahead and go back to the build section of rubber hose and instead of hip ankle, again, this is all just naming conventions, we're gonna go shoulder wrist, and we're gonna build that rig, okay? So um, we'll do the left arm first. So let's color these red, help us stay organized, and we're gonna move the shoulder into place here. We're gonna move the wrist into place. And I, I should have mentioned earlier that in addition to adjusting the colors, you can obviously also, whoops, also adjust the thickness of these hoses as well. So we'll give them nice, maybe nice skinny arms here. And uh, you have to, uh, again, we're going to have to adjust the length of the hose. So let's try 300 and let's uh, do the bend radius down to 15% again. So we get kind of a nice... Um, sharp bend and you know that's just personal preference obviously the noodle bend is kind of big right now uh, they use it all the time in that show adventure time which i love um, so there is our uh, arm i think that length looks okay now you'll notice that it's bending uh in this direction which is fine but down here you probably want to bend it in the opposite direction well you can control and animate the direction that it bends by sliding this bend direction right here and you can do that in the middle of animation as well. So um, the, that's easy enough to control, all right? So what we're gonna do is we got this arm built. Let's go ahead and color the hose and I'm gonna pick, uh, let's pick the eyelid color. So it's a little bit darker than his body color. So you see a little separation there, okay? All right, so that is his arm and we're gonna real quickly um, go ahead and go to the manage tab on rubber hose and click duplicate and again that gives us a, a duplicate of that rubber hose that we already made with the same styling we'll color it green to maintain our naming convention and we'll drag it beneath the torso and the shoulder needs to get moved over here and the wrist as well okay so now we got some arms that are working now before i forget let's take the shoulders here and let's parent them to the torso so again when the torso moves the shoulders move with it all right so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and create another quick composition here in fact i'm gonna just i'm gonna duplicate the foot and i'm gonna rename it hand and we're gonna get into the hand comp here 
And this is a way that you can switch between different pre-drawn hand positions. So let's assume that this is a real simple character animation and I just want three different hand positions to, to switch between here. So let's give this composition three frames. One for each hand illustration that we're gonna make, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and start with the first hand and I'm gonna drag out just a, a little rounded um, rectangle here. And I'm gonna get rid of the stroke. For the fill, I'm gonna grab that same eyelid color over here. Okay, and let's give this guy a couple little fingers. So let's just say that this first uh, this this first hand position is is like a fist. Okay, um, I'm not gonna again. You know, sounds like an excuse at this point. Uh, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time making this look pretty. Again, it's just about the concepts. So um, there we go. Let's let's just uh, let's just pretend that this is a decent looking fist. Okay. Um, so let's see here. I'm going to drag that down underneath. Okay, all right, so good enough. Maybe maybe we could give him four or uh, five fingers instead of just four, but uh, it doesn't really matter. All right, so there's, there's his stupid little fist that looks terrible. All right, so that's, uh, that's pose number one. Now let's go ahead and create pose number two. Pose number two will be, maybe it'll be him pointing out like that, okay? Um, and then we can do pose number three. And obviously you can make these as good and detailed as you want. Um, you know, no need to just stick to two colors here and, and making it real simple, make it as look as pretty as you want to make it. So. Third one will be, you know, kind of a goofy, poorly illustrated thumbs up. All right, so those are the hand poses. So let's go ahead and pull those in. And um, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the feet. So the first step is let's go ahead and drag the anchor point over to where this would make sense for it to rotate from. And we're gonna parent it to the wrist And it looks like I forgot to name this one. I, I probably didn't name either of the arms. So we'll name this arm left, this arm right. Okay. So the hand is now parented to the wrist. And we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to turn off auto rotate end because that's just how I like to work. So uh, we'll drag it underneath that wrist controller so we can easily grab that wrist controller. Okay. And now we got that hand following the arm. So we're gonna real quick do the same thing with the other arm. Drag the hand down underneath that wrist and we'll parent it to that wrist. And for that wrist, we'll turn off auto rotate end. And we'll get it in place there. Okay, let me just test this, make sure. You see, it's kind of hard to grab some of this stuff, but we're gonna, we're gonna fix that. Um, so let me just grab this wrist. All right, we're good. Okay, so here's the way that, that this is gonna work, and it's similar to how a lot of people do, uh, it's the same technique that a lot of people use to do lip sync. So um, you, you create a bunch of different mouth shapes for lip sync and then you switch between them as you're animating. So we're going to do the same thing with the hands here. We're going to take both of the hand layers and we're going to hit control plus alt plus T. 
and that adds time remapping. So now we can time remap these layers and drag out the length of them to the length of our animation, okay? And then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna delete the second keyframes here because we don't need them. And then for the keyframes that remain, we're gonna hit Control, Alt, and click on them. And that changes them to hold keyframes. So now, the way this works is we can switch between different hand poses by using time remapping. So if we move to frame eight, for instance, and let's say we want him to be giving a thumbs up with that, uh, with that right hand, we can just move this to frame, <coughs> excuse me, move this to frame two. Got to be careful not to overshoot. Move that to frame two, and we got our, our nice, awful hand uh, thumbs up there, okay? So maybe at the same time, we want him doing the finger gun and pointing with his left hand here. And there you go. So that's how you can kind of switch between different hand poses as you're animating, and also how you can switch between uh, different mouths if you want to uh, lip sync. Um, again, you know, for our rig here, I created a mouth because, you know, let's assume that in this imaginary project, we don't have to do any lip sync, but this allows us to manipulate the shape of the mouth and get different poses that way, okay? So um, that's, that's the basics. So let's go ahead and uh, I wanna grab the torso here and make sure everything is linked up okay and it looks like it is. I'm gonna change the resolution to a third and we can get rid of that, uh, that illustration there. So, um, you know, you can get as deep and complex into rigging this and cleaning it up and making it user-friendly as you want to. Um, one of the first things that I do is I take all of the rubber hoses, um, so the ones that actually have the shape layers on them, and I shy those and I lock them because you don't need to be messing with the shape layers necessarily after it's all rigged up. I also typically take the, um, the hip and the, the shoulder joints and I hide those as well. So shoulder, shoulder, hip, hip, okay? Um, because you, know, you don't necessarily need to be messing with those. You don't necessarily need to see them. Um, you know, if, if you're kind of trying to, to rotate your character and do a little parallax and you, then you might want to adjust where those joints are in animation, but <clears throat> for simplicity's sake, um, you don't need to be touching them that much. So I usually just hide them, but if you do want to see them, um, up in, in your viewport here all the time, you can easily just move all of those um above all of the artwork layers so um you can you can take them all and drag them up here and that way you can see them so you can grab them if you want uh it's up to you okay so i have all those hidden in the timeline though because i probably won't be adding keyframes to them all right so uh for the torso what i like to do is because this is a big artwork layer and it gets kind of in the way of selecting other stuff is it's probably best to add a null here and we can call this torso and we can color it whatever the heck we want so we can go with purple and uh, we can parent the torso to that null and then we can you know shy if we want that torso layer and lock it so now the torso is controlled by that null and that takes that big piece of artwork out of the out of the equation, so it's much easier to grab all these smaller pieces of artwork now, okay? Uh, and and the controllers as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, what you can do at this point is you can hide all the layers that you don't really want to see in here. So that greatly simplifies everything. So you only have the layers that you uh, want to be animating keyframes on, okay? And, uh, you know, there might be other layers that I hid that you will at some point need to put keyframes on. But this is kind of a simple basic rig, the basic setup. All right. So that is um, cleaning up that area. And then the face, did I already clean it? Yeah, I did. OK, so let me just go ahead and and give you a couple little tips on animating this. So I have my own little character animation layout up here that changes um, 
the the way that After Effects is, is kind of laid out here. Okay, and what this does is gives me a vertical timeline because uh, while you're animating and you have all this stuff open with keyframes and stuff, it gets really tall and it's nice to just have this vertical timeline. But what it also does is it gives me space to, let's lock this composition. You know, a lot of people would say, well, it's great to have all of the face stuff in one composition, but I would like to have all the controls to animate it in the main composition where I'm doing my character animation. And that's a valid point. And you can do some stuff like that, like with, with scripts, you could get, uh, there's a script called joysticks and sliders that allows you to put controls, controlling one composition into another composition. But in this instance, I, I, I don't think it's necessary and it's just as easy to work this way. So I locked this composition here, this composition viewer. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to double click on the face layer and that opens up another composition viewer okay so now I have two of them and I can go back let me close this don't need that there <coughs> now I can go back and I can simultaneously animate this guy picking these layers and animate his face over here if I want to and it that'll work for as many you know uh, mini compositions as you have so if uh, if if you have compositions for you know you want to for whatever reason animate his hands inside of another composition just open up another composition viewer and you can do it all simultaneously okay so um, I'm gonna get rid of the parenting column here you can also go ahead and uh, create multiple timelines so down here I have his main composition where I can do all of his main body movements on this composition down here and then up here, I have his face where I can animate his face uh, individually. So I can see all the keyframes at once when I do it like this. So, um, you know, I, I'm not going to get into to character animation here, and I'm probably not the authority on that anyway. But let's just say that uh, we, we want to do a real quick, you know, body movement. And um, let's go ahead and... First of all, I want to, I did not add motion to this, I don't think, so I want to have that here. Okay. All right, so let's just say that uh, for whatever reason, he does a quick little squat. Um, so I create a position on his torso null there, and we'll say that he does a quick squat over, you know, I don't, I don't know what I did there, six frames or so. And then he moves back up. And then he settles in, okay? So let's put some easing on those. So we have this stupid, awful little animation here of him kind of doing this, whoops kind of doing this bounce, right? And we can get in there and we can uh, deal with his uh, his wrist controllers as well and, and you know, maybe he gets real excited and his shoulders and his arms go up there. And they go down here. And then they go back up a little bit and we can add a little bit of easing to all those. And then maybe on um, his right arm, we have the bend direction going the opposite way. Okay, so, so there's his, his stupid little animation. All right, so you can animate his body movements there. And then let's say, when he uh, when he squats down like that, um, actually, let's say when he starts out, we want him to be kind of wide-eyed. So we grab his eyelids there, and then when he squats down, we want him to kind of squint a little bit for whatever reason. None of this makes sense, but it's just showing you how you can animate this stuff together. 
and then we'll keep those keyframes for the squint there. And then when he settles in, we're gonna go back to his original wide eyes. Whoops, accidentally hit the paint shortcut there. Okay, so and then we can add a little bit of easing to this and maybe offset it by a couple frames, I don't know. Okay, so there's our little guy moving. And, and so you can see that's how you can animate within the pre-comp his facial expressions and uh, his body movements on the outside. Now, there's one last thing I wanna show you, and that's how you can go into this main comp. And you can, the reason I had all of his face and his horns and stuff on separate layers is so you can add a little parallax uh, to, to his movements. So let's say that um, at the same time that he's doing this ridiculous little little squat, he's also kind of looking to the right. So his front horn would come to the right with his face, but his back horn would probably move to the left a little bit. And we're gonna hold that position there, and then we're gonna go back to his original position at the end of the movement. So again, just kind of messing with a little bit of easing there and maybe I'll offset those by a couple frames. So pretty bad animation, uh, but it shows you what you can do and how easy it is to work with rubber hose and, and work with these different uh, compositions if you lay out your After Effects um, in, in a particular way. So um, that is how to create and rig a character in After Effects. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, maybe make the artwork look a little bit better, uh, put some a some, uh, few minutes into it to make it a little nicer, and I'm going to share this project file with you so you can tear it apart and look at it and um, you know do what you want with it. So that is my uh, tutorial. I hope that this helped you guys. If you have any questions, I know I blew through it quickly. Uh, don't hesitate to ask. Um, and, and I hope to see you on the next tutorial. All right. Thanks guys. Bye.